But um, who's come along to one of these show and tells before? Big show of hands. A few. Okay, cool. I won't dwell too long on some of the details of why we do these, but I'll, I'll do a quick recap. We're also attempting to stream this live on YouTube to other colleagues in the local government digital world at the moment, which is why we are kind of wrestling with devices. Um, so, hi, I'm Ben Unsworth, uh, head of digital here at the County Council. Um, and what we're going to do is just give you a bit of an update on what we've been doing over the last two weeks of work on this project. So we're about six weeks in, uh, we've got lots of interesting stuff to kind of share with you, um, and this is your chance to um, obviously see what we're doing, ask us questions, um, and help us spot things as well. There'll be a bunch of stuff we maybe don't know the detail of, have missed, not thought about, and it's your job in all of this to help us kind of pull some of those things out and give us some of this feedback as we go. Um, won't dwell too long on this one. We're working in what we call an agile way. This just means we're learning lots. Uh, we're not making assumptions. We're doing lots of testing with real people out there. So, you know, anytime we put a design together or create some information about uh, content that goes on a page, we'll put it in front of actual users, um, see how they interact with it, see how they understand it, see where perhaps it doesn't kind of quite meet what we thought they would do. Uh, you always learn some really fascinating things when you watch people actually interact with things you've built. Um, and that, that goes for everything about the project. So you know, the technology we're building, the kind of services we're designing, it's all based on lots of testing, lots of learning, and quite, quite short two weekly feedback loops. As I say, this is your chance to kind of really input. This helps us kind of talk out loud, do our thinking in the open, um, and give you all a chance to, uh, to kind of, as I say, pick up any issues and then ask us lots and lots of questions. You can do that as we go, or you can kind of save them up. We've got a little bit at the end as well to give you a, a specific chance to uh, to grill us. So last two weeks, um, what we're going to kind of talk you through is some of the work we've done on content strategy, um, some specific work we're doing with colleagues in the library service, um, how we're thinking about the navigation pages, so how people will get around this new website that we're building. Um, we'll talk in a bit of detail about some of the online testing and in-person testing we've been doing as well, so, so that testing with some of our residents, um, with a particular look at some stuff we were doing just yesterday in Amersham. Um, We'll talk through the detail of all of those. So, um, last little bit, I think, for me for a while. So, the, the content strategy, um, we've agreed one. Um, so, colleagues of the Resources Board have, have kind of seen this and, and said they're broadly, broadly happy with it. Um, so, we're going to kind of finalise it, and this will be the document we use to kind of manage how we create things on this new website. So the purpose, why, why do we have a content strategy at all? Um, it's, it's frankly, it's, how we, it's about how we improve content on the web for, for Buckinghamshire. So this is the words on pages, the images we use, the tables of data, the videos we, we might choose to put up. All of that is content. It should all be designed in a really purposeful way that meets our users' needs and is something that we know how to kind of keep on top of, maintain and track whether it's actually helping people do the things they need to do. The content strategies help us do that. They set a bit of a framework for the way that we manage that process of working with services to design, agree and publish content. Um, and we're going to be quite particular about it, certainly in the first kind of first bit of this new website's life. If you lose control of any element of that, you've kind of lost it forever because anyone can then say, well, they did it that way. They didn't have to follow these rules and, and you have a bit of a free for all. So, so we will probably appear a little bit unreasonable, um, but we'll have that conversation with colleagues. We'll explain why. We'll try and try and help, help each other in understanding how this ultimately gives our users a better experience. Um, it's, it's about making sure, obviously, not just the, the user but there's some legal stuff as well. So legally, there's a bunch of stuff we just have to publish. That will be there too. Uh, the content strategy helps us do that. Um, and it, it gives us a good plan for what to do when maybe we don't need that content anymore. So one of the reasons council websites tend to start at about three or 400 pages, and in the blink of an eye are at 4,500, is because we don't really have a plan for what to do when something doesn't really need to be there. We just keep kind of layering stuff on and on and on. So really important, we need to think about how we can archive and end of life bits of, bits of information that we don't need. Um, and it also helps us make decisions about where the right place for something is. So something we really struggle with at the moment is because colleagues don't always have a great place to put, uh, for example, a really interesting set of slides from a set of conferences they run, it goes on the website. Um, and that, that happens time and time and time again. So we kind of use our website as a bit of a document storage, a way of sharing interesting things for quite small niche groups of people, which again isn't really the point of our corporate website. So we need to have a bit of a think about what are our other ways of publishing this kind of stuff? Where might it make more sense to, to kind of put? Okay, 
Okay, uh, user stories for libraries. I'll just very quickly, so worked with colleagues in the library service. We wanted to choose a service that was both kind of high, high volume, lots of people come here, lots of people use it. Um, is county-wide, so we know we've got some really hard stuff to figure out where we offer slightly different ways of doing things across all of our districts and the county. For the very first bit of content we really dig into and try to redesign, we wanted to give ourselves a slightly easier job, just to be perfectly honest. New team coming together, trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Thought we'd start with something that was county-wide, um, and colleagues and libraries were keen to work with us as well, which is always a help, so we're not trying to kind of bash down closed doors here. So it's a really good, good thing to start with. We've, we've designed some user stories. These are just ways of defining the problems we're trying to solve for people. So, you know, as somebody with children, I want to go to a library to find things to do for my kids. That's, that's a user story I have, and that's kind of my primary reason for using libraries. We need to think about what that means on the web. So how do we fulfill that need through the things we put online? And that might include things like helping people know where a library is, helping people know what happens in the library when they get there, helping people know how to get you know, a membership of the library so they can take part in certain activities or borrow certain things. Those would all help fulfill that need and are things we probably need this new website to be able to do. And that'll be the approach with all of our, all of our little user stories. They're, they're ways to kind of make sure we stay focused on the user need and, and design things that, that kind of meet those. Um, if anyone's ever interested in any of the detail of this, it's all kind of open to be looked at and inspected. So if you want to get into the weeds, just let us know and we can share loads of links with you and you can kind of jump in and, and see you know, see all of the detail about what we're thinking here. Okay, I'll pass to Boris, our lead designer, to talk about the map. Yeah, hi. Um, so, on top of the library stuff, uh, one of the major things we've been working on is uh, the things you see here just behind me. So, we've worked on uh, what we call navigation pages. So, that's like 16 of the main like categories that will be on the website, and we've made like the top level pages for those sections, um, which essentially are just links leading to all the other uh, pages that contain the actual content. But we really wanted to make sure that, that navigation structure is quite clear and that users are able to use it well. And we put a lot of effort into doing so um, in, in this last screen. Uh, I'm also going to ask you at the end if anyone's able to stay a couple of minutes after the show and tell just provide some input on what you see on the wall here. But I'm going to explain that a bit later. Uh, so once we've done that, we've also devised uh, different tests, so we want to test this with residents. Um, we mentioned in the last show and tell that we've recruited a number of people through, uh, through the website as well as through some uh, communication channels like newsletters and stuff. Uh, so we have about uh, 95, 96 participants that have signed up online to participate in user testing and we have shared um, like short online tests with high number of these participants, so about 90 participants have received these online tests and that's currently live and they, they, they can complete them on their own time. We're going to share some of those results later. So these tests just contain tasks about how to find certain content. Um, so for example, waste and recycling, as you see on the screen, and when they find the right content, they can say, they can say yes, I think what I'm looking for might be in this category. Um, so this is going to help us understand if they can find things well or not. <coughs> The other thing we did was we did face-to-face -face testing, right? So while online testing can help us understand, you know, which things work well and which don't, um, what it doesn't give us is an in-depth understanding of why something works better than some other things. So we want to do like more in-depth testing as well, which um, we did yesterday in Amersham with five of these participants. Uh, so these were 30 minutes to 45 minutes long. Uh, basically interviews where they were again given some tasks, they were using the website and also you know, alongside that just having an open conversation. Um, so we did share that with uh, the rest of the team via an online platform as well so they were able to kind of write comments as the tests were ongoing uh, which is quite useful for us to just capture all the insights uh, while things are happening. Uh, and to give you an idea of what kind of things we might be doing with the uh, information we get from this uh, these user testing sessions. Um, so these are some of the things we did in this sprint based on the testing we did in the last sprint. Um, so we had a version of the homepage already designed and we did some testing in the last sprint and some of the changes we've made for example are here where uh, we have made that uh, box on top that talks about the unit authority a bit more prominent because we realized through, during testing that people were just kind of skipping through it that we didn't really notice it that much. Another thing that was uh, quite clear from the initial user testing is that some of the 
titles of the categories were not immediately apparent as being clickable, so we just made it more clear that they could click on them. Um, we also did some iteration on uh, the branding of the um, local area pages or the you know, current district council websites where we have realized it's actually important to put the logo on there and just make the area name quite big and bold so people realize which area they're in and at the same time they realize that that falls under the, the new, um, new Buckinghamshire Council. So that's kind of the way we work. We do some testing then based on the feedback we get we try to make some small changes like that. Um, and to show you a bit more about where all of that is at the moment, right? I want to show you the current prototype. So what's the current version of what things might look like? So that's the current homepage. Uh, again, it's a little bit changed from what you may have seen in the last sprint, but uh, roughly it's still the same. Um, so it has the main categories. What we've done now is like we've just expanded that list to uh, like 15 categories plus a business section at the bottom. Um, and just did a lot of focus on how to write these titles and how to write uh, the descriptions of each, each of the subcategories. And again, we've also made it so that these are linked to all of these pages that you see on the wall, so on the kind of second level navigation. Um, and these don't really go anywhere at the moment, except for a couple of pages. So one of the particular uh, journeys we're kind of testing throughout is this uh, journey of household pin collection. You've seen that people are always, I think even the, the participants yesterday, like all five of them, that's one of the things they always look for is the pin collection dates. They had a completely yeah. free choice of what things they would like to try and do on this new website. And, yeah, all yeah they all went for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in particular, why we're interested in that is because this is an example journey for us to show how you might get to these other websites. So we've shown that before, right? So. Um, we've added the, the children one yesterday, so we can test with the uh, residents there. And we've made a little bit of change on, on the top section here. Um, and, but really, the main, the main effort in the last sprint has been around just designing all of these little descriptions that you see on these pages. So it was very kind of focused on the content of, of all of these pages. Um, we're going to share that link with you as well, so you can kind of browse through the prototype later if you want. And also, you're more than welcome. You know, see the things on, on, on here and comment on them. Uh, yeah, so design-wise, actually, that's not super exciting in a way. It's, it's, it's very much about the text, but that's really important. For the text. <coughs> and what I would like to maybe talk more about uh, today, rather than showing you the, the, the screens, right, is really talk about what we've heard from the residents when we spoke to them. Um, so these are just some high-level, I guess, insights that we got from, from the residents. So first of all, th there's quite a lot of positive feedback that we get as a first impression of the website. People do generally like the fact that it looks very clean, it looks very clear. Um, it does still have a big picture of you know, some landscape that represents Buckinghamshire quite well. People like that a lot. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily respond that well. We tried a, a simple website without an image as well, but people quite like having a little bit of character in there. So that's great. Um, but we did get some comments like uh, someone was saying yesterday about the, the, the term unitary, right? So they've heard this talk about unitary authority, um, but they felt that maybe that's very much council, council jargon, right? So we need to be a bit careful with the language there because for the residents, a lot of the things that we take for granted actually don't mean that much. So they, they really need to have things presented in very plain English kind of way, which is, which is a, I think, insight that we get from every project we work on, really. It's, you know, things need to be very clear and very, very easy to understand. So I think, again, based on this feedback, ideally in the next uh, you know, couple of weeks, we're going to do some changes and uh, hopefully we're going to see a, an improved version of that. Uh, the other thing, again, we focused on a lot was the content uh, area itself, right? So well, how, do how do people find content in these categories? Does that all make sense? The thing that surprised us all quite a bit is that uh, there are quite a few comments about uh, why this isn't in alphabetical order. Um, and we, we don't quite know exactly why that is the case, but uh, I guess an assumption I'm making here is that that might be because it seems quite a lot of information and whatever there it's too much information to take in. People are looking to get some order in there. Um, 
So, so this this for me is one of the it's one of the challenges in, in user research where you kind of have to really switch on the research a bit of your brain. So it would be quite easy to just hear, okay, we've heard from five people they think an alphabetical order is, is helpful and go and make that change. Now we know alphabetical order is not super helpful because it prioritizes things in an even more unusual way. So some of our lower use services, archives, archaeology, come to the top of the list. Um, but also one person's bins is another person's waste. So you know, you might assume it's under B and it's under W and people will get lost yeah. again. So you kind of have to ask that next question, which is, okay, well, what does that mean? Why Why have they said that? What's the problem they think that's going to help them solve? Because that's the thing that we need to design for, not just here, okay, A to Z, A to Z, and then kind of go off and make that change. And so we get lots of that with bits of feedback and you kind of always have to ask that next two or three questions sometimes, like a kid again, it's like, you keep asking why enough times so and you'll find the real thing under there somewhere. So one of the things that becomes quite quickly apparent is that people look for specific keywords and those keywords are not always the same. As Ben said, someone might be looking for bins and someone else might be looking for waste, which makes it very difficult to, to do like an alphabetical kind of thing. It also means we need to be very careful about what keywords we're using. So we may need to revisit the insights from uh, the analytics we have, for example, and just look really at uh, the keywords people are searching for um, and just make sure that those really main keywords are represented well in this structure. Um, and said that actually, the beans was still quite an easy thing to find even for people who were looking for something else. It just, you know, being the top most link, it was quite uh, easy for everyone that wanted to find that to actually go there. Uh, it was interesting to test with people from the children area in this case. Um, so I think it's really important we do that. It's really important we test with a variety of residents, not just local to a particular area or not of any specific age group. We need to test with a variety of them. Um, in this case, we found that some people may be living in areas that are not as, it's not as clear to them which area they might belong to. Um, in particular, when it comes to waste collection, things get a bit more complicated because the service is actually shared across a number of areas. So someone was saying they know that politically they're supposed to be in the children area, but actually the waste service is shared with uh, the same service as they use in uh, the so that, that there's quite a bit of complexity in there and some people might still prefer to use the postcode search. Uh, in this case, it wasn't quite clear to all of them that that was actually there, so we may need to emphasize that a bit more. Um, and at the same time, make it easy for people that do know their area, right? It, it gets quite difficult to please everyone sometimes. Um, another thing we were talking about quite a lot yesterday with the participants was the notion of some content still being on the old websites and how they felt about that sudden jump from the new website to the old websites. Um, I think we may need to be a bit more explicit when we're presenting those links uh, as to why that is the case and what that means and you know what the transition period might be and those kind of things. Uh, because people were quite surprised, like that they know that this transition is happening, they know about the unity or authority, and then you know their comments were like why am I still going to the old website if this is one single council now? Um, so sometimes it's just useful to put a little bit of context around the fact that some of these pages will still be on the old website. Another thing that became really apparent is that it's very tricky for people to actually notice any changes in the top section uh, because when they're doing their, when they're going about finding their content, uh, they're really focusing kind of just on the content part. And actually many people when they came to this page, they didn't even realize that it was any different to the pages they were seeing before. They're just looking for the text. So it, it makes it quite tricky and maybe we need potentially to think a little bit about making some changes in the titles of the actual pages or things like that, depending on what might be easier. Um, yeah, that's just some of the feedback. I don't know, is there any, any other stuff that you remember from yesterday? No, I think that's covered the main things. It's, I, I said this last time, it's every time you put these things in front of people, you, you learn something new. So it's a good, reassuring thing that this is a good investment of time and effort, um, and it, it makes a lot of sense to do. Um, we, you know, we'll keep getting out and around the county. We know we've only spoken to a few areas and a few kind of particular subsets of people within that, so it's, it's on us to keep doing the hard work to, to find some of our other users. Um, and we'll also be when we're a bit further down the technology build bit of this as well, we'll probably look at commissioning a specialist agency to help us recruit um, people with specific disabilities so we can do some more of the accessibility testing in, in a fairly controlled way. 
So we know we've got lots more to do. It will be a feature of every sprint as we go. Next step. Yeah. Um, what next? So um, yeah. So one of the one of the uh, extra things I guess we we're going to be doing. This is one of the first bits of transformation um, for the new authorities. We're going to have a single way of, of uh, letting people apply, uh, find and apply for jobs, um, which is great. So a lot of the work is happening behind the scenes in HR now to make all of the kind of processes around that come together. Our bit is then connecting that to a to a digital service that works for people. So we've got a, a kind of we've sectioned off a bit of our time um, to go away and do some work with HR. We're going to do a thing called a design sprint, which, because everybody's super busy, we're going to have a really focused kind of three days together with the HR service, where all we do is think about this particular set of problems. We'll quickly go through some designs. There's been some good work done recently in central government. So um, I know, uh, I think NHS, DWP, and others have all recently redesigned their find and apply for a job services. So there's some helpful kind of patterns, ways of doing this that are out there, very well tested, very well designed. We will steal those, um, we'll reuse them, we'll adapt them for our kind of local needs, but they, they won't be too far off. Um, so we'll then, we've, we've still got work to do to know who looks after all of the content on all of the websites. That is a very big list. Uh, we mentioned before, some four and a half thousand pages. In theory, all of those should have an owner. They don't. Um, we need to find owners for them. Uh, so that we can have those conversations with people who know the facts, the accuracy, the legislation that sits under this stuff for, for when we start doing that writing. Some bits of that are more urgent than others, so, you know, things we need to do now, we desperately need to find those content owners. Stuff that's in the, the kind of post-April, we, we'll worry about a little bit later on. Uh, we've got a few other types of pages still to design, so we know there are things like um, news, possibly stuff to do with events, maybe blogs, other things that sit outside of this kind of core navigation. Um, that we'll need some templates for and some ways of presenting on, online. Um, so there'll be a bunch of those that we have to have to think about. More research, research will, will keep going. Um, and colleagues from Torchbox uh, are doing some work in the background at the moment to get all of the infrastructure up and running for, for actually having a thing that, that works for real, isn't just a prototype. So it won't be too long before we've got a content management system that we can actually start using. Um, and so colleagues will be using that in the future. We'll have a chance to learn a little bit about how that works. Um, and we'll get you know, into a place where instead of putting a slightly kind of ropey prototype in front of folks, they'll be interacting with a, a, a real website, um, which will be yeah, which will be great. It gives us all a chance to learn kind of even more together. Um, still, roughly following this plan, um, you know, the, this is it's not easy, but we've got wriggle room in here because we, you know, what a minimum viable product here is. It, we have a very minimum version of it, which is roughly what we've shown today. We'll do as much more than that as we possibly can with the time we have. So, you know, what is how it looks in February when we get there? Um, very hard to tell you. It will definitely do the key things it needs to do, um, plus probably a few other bits and pieces as we go. So, yeah, it's all pretty much on track. But the definition of what that final thing will be is, is a pretty moving feast. Um, we're learning stuff every day. So, any questions about any of that or anything else about the project? Hello? <laughs> um, so one question is around, um, so when I've worked on websites before, most people just go to Google and get back to Google. Yeah. So you tend to have your hustle way through site and site, and then you go to site and site and site and site. Yeah. So I'm assuming you're putting that language in so that it goes from and search and search. What will happen, so when you show the waste when it goes into the Website, the website, mm -hmm. where, so if somebody just said collect your bins, yeah. would it go to the local depending on what they plants? Yeah, good good market? question. So um, in terms of how, how it's so yeah, most people do start on Google, absolutely yeah. right. Um, you know, our home page is very interesting to us, yeah. not super interesting to a lot of other folks sometimes. Um, so in the in the short term, if people are just searching for things like you know, Chilton bins, Wickham bins, Aylesbury bins, it, it will take them straight through to their district, to the correct district page as it does today. Um, so we're not looking to break any of that. If we can still let people do an easy Google search and land deep in the website on the right page, fantastic. We we don't have any vanity about having forcing people to come through our new site just to get lots of visitors, for sure. Um, but that will change over time. So as more of the content lives on the new website, we'll have to think quite carefully about maybe how we handle redirects from old pages to new so that people 
you know, who are trying to look for something that doesn't exist anymore come to the most relevant piece of content. So yeah, there's a, a bit of a detailed job of mapping old URLs, new URLs, thinking about yeah, how search will be handled. But yeah, ideally it will stay super easy for people. Any more for any more? What about the website to the search engine? Yes. Phil, anything specific you want to say about the search we'll use on the site? Um, we're using a simple search for um, the case of the web field, but we also see exploring potential opportunities for expanding that out to that's a work in progress at the moment. Yeah, so yeah, so absolutely it will be there. We'll, the search works best when your content is really clear and well organised. So by focusing on that now, will give search a chance of being a really useful tool for people. So you, know, you can have really powerful search platforms, but if your content's a mess, it, it doesn't help people um, at all. We really interesting thing we saw in testing is when, you, when we asked people how they typically use websites, they told us, oh yeah, I use the search bar at the top. We then set them some tasks to do, and I don't think any of them clicked on the search bar at the top. Maybe yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, again, difference between what people say and do, their behaviour actually was to immediately scroll through the categories. So, yeah, that's an interesting thing to dig into. It'd be good to know why that is. But yeah, one of the reasons why we were focusing so much on these descriptions as well is because we realised that's the thing that's going to appear in Google and in other search results. So it needs to be really clear to people what's under that. Any more? We're going to hang around for a bit afterwards. If you've got other bits and pieces you want to pick up with us, um, we'll be here. I ask, so just before we finish off, uh, I would like to ask everyone here, if you can have a look at all of these pages um, and specifically try to find things that seem a bit out of place or, or things that you feel need a bit of uh, being revisited. So anything that you feel doesn't quite work well at the moment. Um, there are some red dots over here. If you could take a dot for each of the things you spot that you want to change, just put them next to the thing you feel needs, needs some amendments. That would really help us just to focus on the things that we know need, need a bit more attention. If you've really got to get something off your chest, there's some post-it notes and pens as well, so yeah. have a scribble if it's something really particular. Otherwise, thank you so much. We'll be here again in about two weeks' time. Um, please come again. <laughs>